Hey, Tomies, we would like to thank our sponsor, Nerd Alert Treasures, for supporting this podcast. Nerd Alert Treasures makes handmade and customizable dice trays, pencil bags, and our personal favorite, dice bags with pockets. Use our promo code TOMIES, that's T-O-M-I-E-S, for 15% off. Follow the link in the show notes to get yours today, and be on the lookout for Tomies merch. You are listening to Tomes of the Chaos Party. Welcome, welcome, listeners, to Tomes of the Chaos Bard. I am DM Dave, and to the left we have... Henley. Boudreau. Lila Garatha. Roscoe. And Fenrir. And a recap will be by Roscoe. All right, so we uh, made a quick lap up to the uh, blacksmith real quick, and I've got some cool stuff going on. we got some silver arrowheads and daggers coming our way. And then we started the tournament. We started with the archery. Um, we did pretty okay. Um, Henley, not so much, but she did all right. She did all right in the archery. And we moved on <laughs> to the obstacle course, and Fenrir just blew everybody out of the water and dominated. And I did pretty okay, and Henley, not so much, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll move on. Uh, end of day one, I'm hanging out fourth, fifth place overall for the tournament. Frenner is doing pretty all right above me. Henley, not so much, but we're moving on. <laughs> and that's about Thanks where we're Thanks for mentioning at. it like three times. <laughs> <laughs> Henley, he show. said move along. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and in the stands, I apologize, in the stands, Lila and Boudreau hung out and made some noise and Lila got rejected. Oh. Annoyingly. Annoyed. No, I know. I know that I got rejected. But he unknowingly, Boudreaux didn't yeah, realize what was I'll... happening, though, right? Doesn't matter. I'm pretty sure this is how recaps don't work. <laughs> <laughs> guys. So you guys were able to meet back up at the end. Roscoe, you're heading off to your blacksmith friend. Yeah, I got to get my weapon back, apparently. Okay. And Henley is... Gone. Pretty much after the obstacle course, she kind of just disappeared. Who would like to go with Roscoe to the blacksmith? Me. Okay, Boudreaux's going. Anybody else? I want to. Bender shakes his head no. But I'm not going to because Boudreaux's going. (laughs) Gotcha. We'll start with Boudreaux and Roscoe, giving you two, uh, Fenrir and Lila, some time to think about what they would like to do. So on the way there, okay, I am looking for anybody selling silverware. Silverware. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's the one store I did not think about putting in here is a silverware store. Yeah, it's really popular. Please tell Everybody. me that there is a gnome that just sells shiny things that his crow finds. Look at this so stuff. Shiny. Isn't, Isn't it neat? neat? <laughs> <laughs> Silverware? It's called knickknacks. People can make it into <laughs> jewelry and wind chimes, and it doesn't have to just be an ain't new tinsel. Hmm. At this area of the district, there's not. It's more armor and weapons in this area. If you go back to kind of where the Glomquest mansion is, that back that direction, you could probably find a place. Should probably throw one at you. <laughs> oh, maybe we should go steal some. Let's do ice. <laughs> yeah, maybe. They might have some silver. Anyway. Okay. You arrive back at the Fire Giant Forge. Cool. Uh, walk, we'll walk through the door and meet Dude Man again. Yep. We'll be like, hey. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> sorry to bother. I know you guys are busy. Is uh, Marilor available by any chance? Uh, Yeah, let me go get her again. Sorry. Uh, yeah, goes back there. Mer- uh, Marilor comes comes out. Oh, did you did you forget something? Um. Well, so I kind of goofed. What are the odds you could have my glaive done 
by the morning after next. The morning after next. I, I'll throw in an extra 15 silver. But I didn't think about the, the melee combat part of the um, tournament. And I'd much rather use something I'm comfortable with than the ragtag weapons they have down there. I'd... It'll be pushing it, but if you're not comfortable with the weapons that they're using, I mean, this is going to be way different than you're used to, so you're still going to have to get used to this one. She, she got a good point there, Rodgo. Um, <clears throat> ha have you broken down my old one yet? I have not gotten to it, no. Can I... You want it back? Borrow it. You can keep the nice one because okay. I've never used that one. So use that one and start breaking that one down. And then if I can take the old one back and use it for the competition, then I'll get it back down to you. Assuming if I don't make it past tomorrow, I'll bring it back tomorrow night. Yeah, that's always valid. Yeah, let me let me go grab it for you. Thank you. Goes back, brings it back. Yeah, here here you go. Awesome. Thank you. I did hear that you did well today, though. Yeah. Yeah, I ended in uh, fourth-ish place overall, so we did pretty okay in the archery. and Very nice. I stumbled a couple times in the, uh, the obstacle course, but I did pretty all right there, too. So just got to see how the sneaking goes tomorrow. That's the one I'm, I'm a little nervous about. but Yeah, that seems to be where the, a lot of points are, are made well. is that one. So we'll see what happens, but I'll let you uh, get back to work. Thank you so much for this, and then I'll get that back to you in the next day or two, depending on how things go. Yep, sounds good, and good luck with the with everything else. Thank you so much. You doing nothing else after that, you two? No, I'm probably getting, I need food and go to bed. It's been okay. a long day. Perfect. Finra would like to go back to the bar that we went to that first night. Okay. Or I think it was the first night. The one where you performed at. The one where I performed at and okay. go try and perform again. Roll me some uh, performance checks. Roll me one, please. Nine. Okay, you're a little off tonight. It's not horrible, but people are expecting better out of you. So you're not getting very many tips this time. Some You got some hecklers going on in there. You stink. Do you want to try again? Yeah, let me try again. Okay. You need to get Boudreaux drunk again. Mm-hmm. Nine. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wasted all his good rolls <laughs> earlier. No, I didn't waste them. He used them when they were important. <laughs> true. <laughs> okay. Very yeah, true. They, like, you're not doing horrible, but it is way below par than, you were, than, you're, than you're used to. And people are not paying attention to you. They're, you're not getting any tips off this one. Okay, so he's, he started off trying to play, like, the drums in his... Schwam, whatever that is. I'll look it up later. <laughs> uh, so, well, Tell obviously you're not proficient in <laughs> yeah, it. Right? So. I'm not doing very well. So he's gonna put the put the drum. He's gonna put the schwam away, and he's gonna get out his viol and try and play something and try and do a little bit better because he's being heckled. All right. Here you go. A lot of people are not excited about you starting to play another song. Or get off the stage. And as he goes to his viol, he rolls a 21. Woo! There you go. You start picking up the beat. People are booing you at the beginning, but they're like, oh, yeah, woo! And you get... One silver. You get 23 copper out of that. Because some of the people are still hesitant on giving you tips because of your previous ones. Okay, we will leave the group there for the night. Boudreaux, Roscoe, and Fenrir. Lila. Yeah. What are you up to since you left the group? I want to go out to the shanties and ask around for Pauline because we don't want to get in trouble. And both... Garatha and Lila are kind of in agreement that something needs to happen soon or we're just going to forget and then the, there's going to be not some nice consequences even though Garatha thinks that this is something that that Roscoe should handle. Okay, and you're just kind of asking random people in the streets? 
Um, I would probably go back to one of the bars that I know a little bit better okay. to ask around there and not just randomly because I do know that there's a lot of, there's a larger influx of people who are not necessarily familiar with people who normally stay in the shanties. So I figured the bars are probably a better place than just a random passerby. Okay. As you go down, you enter one of the bars, ask the bartender if they know Pauline. The, no, I don't recognize the name, Pauline. What about, you seen a warg around? She hangs out with a warg sometimes and a, a high elf sometimes from what I understand. You know, I have heard that there was that, that, that elf and there, that warg. The rumors have it that they're staying outside, outside the shanties, kind of way out out there for kind of for privacy. Really? Yeah. I understand that they have like a, a black wagon or okay. something like that. Okay. But I, that's what I heard that there may be a warg. Okay. Well, I thank you for your time and I'm going to slide two copper across. Hmm. Much appreciated. Good luck in your search. Um, I'm going to go to the next bar and ask to see if I kind of get a similar story or not. Yeah, you get a similar story okay. that there has been sightings of a warg and it's mainly out by that end. Same thing with the high elf because the high elf is very strange around here. So people are keeping mm-hmm. kind of a a curious eye on right. her and especially a warg too. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do the smartest thing and I'm going to go by myself Okay. and try and see if I can find this black wagon. Okay. And as you go, you're kind of, um, would you be asking people as you go like, have you seen a black wagon? Mm-hmm. Would you be doing that? Okay. So they're able to point you in the right direction because it is kind of a strange to have a black wagon right. of some kind. And it is getting late. So there is some campfires about and you do run into that black wagon. It is kind of a distance away from everybody else. Out there you see this person playing an instrument, playing a flute of some kind. Okay. And they're kind of just dancing around, very elegant, very gracious. Mm. And as you get closer, you recognize it's that same high elf that that, uh, Brighton was talking to. You see them dancing around. You see this large fellow. He's a little on the heavier side. He's probably like 6'5", very big. He's on the heavier side, but he's still fit, it looks like. And he's just kind of bouncing in his own. He's leaning against the wagon, Mm -hmm. kind of enjoying the, the music going on. And he's a human, by the way. Okay. You see uh, two other ones. You see a small gnome. At this distance, you can't tell if it's a forest gnome or a rock gnome. Okay. Like how he knows that I'm going to ask that. Yep. I saw that. (laughs) (laughs) They have tight curls in their hair. You also see a tall, very lean man kind of sitting on the ground, leaned up against the, the wheel of the cart. Okay. Okay, yeah, and you approach. Yep. And nobody seems to be noticing you. Okay, I want to wait till there's kind of a break in the song and start clapping a little bit. Okay, it draws to a conclusion. You see the other guys clapping, and then you start clapping, and they all kind of turn to you. It's like, oh, the big, the big gentleman mm-hmm. steps up and he kind of raises a drink to you. He's like, oh, come in, join us. What be your name? Well, sugar, my name's Lila. What's yours? My name's Godfrey. Godfrey. Oh, I had that name uh, recently. I'm glad that you, uh, I guess, made it back. Cause... Oh, <laughs> I guess my reputation is growing, men. And everybody's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so what brings you to our humble abode? Uh, so... Here, 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 have a drink, have a drink. Oh, oh, thank you, sugar. I'm Jorgen, gonna... get her something. Uh, I'm going to take the drink that's handed to me, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to drink it right away because I don't, I'm going to smell it first because I don't know what it is. It's, you can get the smell. Garatha would kind of recognize it since she's been a, more of a drinker than Lila, than obviously. Lila. <laughs> it's very old, somewhat stale ale. Oh, okay, so Lila's going to take it. Um, but I'm not going to drink it because okay. Lila doesn't really do that. That's Garatha's thing. Well, now, sugar, if my memory does 
to serve me right. I I do remember this this fine lady here mentioning to one of our friends named Brighton about you and about a certain gentleman named Ivan. And I'm actually, I ran into an Ivan, or we ran into my party now, ran into an Ivan out on the plains. And I'm looking for a Pauline. Does that ring a bell? I'm supposed to pass on a message. And they kind of like all look at each other. And they're like, yes. You see uh, the high elf approach you. She's like, yes, what, what is this news? Oh, honey, all I know is that he told us to uh, tell her that he's still looking. And that's, that's all I know. I don't know anything about her. I, I just am supposed to pass on a message. You see the high elf kind of, you see her demeanor change of a hopeful to kind of defeated. And she kind of looks at Godfrey and Godfrey's like, it gives her that concerned look. He's like, well, please, please, come sit down, please. Of course. Was there but... anything else that he said? Not, not about that I'm supposed to pass on or anything about that. He just kind of, we got ourselves into a little mishap there, and that was part of the, the price for helping us out, was to pass on a message. Hmm. Okay. Now, I would feel most comfortable if I was actually able to pass that on to her, but I don't know who she is. Well, at the moment, she is not here. Mm. Unfortunately, she's out doing her own searching. But so she's supposed to be back soon. She wasn't supposed to go far. What are y'all, or what is she looking for? What's he looking for that, that's got y'all so interested? Well, she used to live with this friend of hers. Her name was Posh. Okay. And she's gone missing. And she's not supposed to be out by herself, and it's a very dangerous world out there. Oh, don't I know it. I mean, she's from way down south, and for some reason she's been tracked all the way up to here. And we're trying to find her, because, you know, it's not safe, and she's uh, on the older side as well. And her kind is not much liked well, around here. What? What's Posh look like? I mean, I, we do all sorts of traveling and whatnot, and I've been around. I don't know if we maybe seen her, not seen her, and I ask around as well. Well, have you seen any drow around? Have I seen any drow? I don't, I don't think so, but... Then you probably haven't seen her. She is a drow, and like I said, they are not very well liked around here. Well, sugar, I'm not much really well liked around my parts neither, so I can understand that, but... I do have some friends. I can always ask them as well if they've seen anything. Well, it would be or much no. appreciated. It's uh, it's somebody that that Pauline considered as like a mother figure, you could say. Oh. And so losing her has been quite a, a, an emotional wreck for her. Well, that's understandable. I, I didn't mean to put any damper on your your festivities here or anything. i just been told that she kind of... Wanders around this uh, black wagon here and with the warg and the, which is, like I said, just trying to pass on a message and do my part. Well, we appreciate you coming. It, please, you hungry? We got some food. Oh, sure. I'll, I'll eat with you. Jorgen, get some food on the fire. Let's not, let's not let this, this uh, information bring us down. Let's, let's get going. Fortali, play us another lovely song. So Vortali, the High Elf, mm -hmm. starts playing another lovely tune. Is there any anything else you would like to discuss with them? So I kind of, like, when she stops again and takes a break, I want to, obviously, I haven't seen a High Elf before. Mm -hmm. Bra Garatha probably hasn't seen one before either. She can tell that she's an elf, but not necessarily what kind of elf. So she's going to probably question her about that and just try to mm -hmm. get to know her a little bit and why she's adventuring. Right, because High Elves have a very very longer pointier ears mm -hmm. than normal elves so yeah go ahead and ask her okay well no honey i've seen a lot of elves in my my time i don't know that i've ever seen anybody quite like you before where are you from well i am originally from the the crystal city <sighs> say what now mm, yes it's a uh, very hidden from the normal world but I've only heard tales, very old tales, about mm, the Crystal yes. City at all. They 
my kind likes to keep to themselves. They don't like to meddle in what they consider mortals' lives. Do y'all not die or just have really long lives? We have really long lives where, where I'm from. We can live up to a thousand plus years. years. Oh, my land. That, that's twice as long as me. Well, maybe. I don't actually know. <laughs> I don't know what I'll be and what I won't be. Let's be honest. Uh, but what brings you out adventuring then? Well, I kind of just got tired of living there and I went out to uh, do a an exchange with my father one day and I decided to stole away in the wagon and the merchants took me away. I've been on my own ever since and I've never regretted the decision. Have you not? You don't ever miss home? I list, miss the pleasantries because there we can control our own weather. So our crops are always green. We have such such delightful times, but it's very mundane, mm. very restrictive, very restricted, very controlled Feel environment. Feel like you can't breathe almost sometimes. Yes, and I just I just couldn't live with that. I know that feeling. We're here. Yeah, it's just freedom. Being able to just roam the plains and. Dance and sing with strangers and get to know people. But you don't ever feel like maybe you should have stayed? Maybe you should have... What you did was the wrong choice? I don't regret my decision. Sure, I've missed my family and I miss... Well, that's about all I had. I didn't have much friends here. I have all the friends in the world. And honestly, this group here, they're my family. I wouldn't give them up for anything. Yeah, we're a bunch of misfits, but... We're family. I think I like your misfits from what I've seen so far. Well, us misfits are always the most enjoyable. <laughs> that we're just going to continue talking a little bit, just banter. And we can kind of keep based, that yeah. going into the night. Are you going to stay here with them or are you going to make yourself back up to uh, Lizbeth's place? It's going to be pretty late, but at some point in time, I'll probably put the drink that I haven't actually touched down and bid them good night because... As much as this is therapeutic, I also want to see if there's been any, been any lead on Garatha's dad getting in contact with her or not. Okay. We'll jump over to Henley. So, we're going back in time a little bit. The tournament has just, just ended. What's going on, Henley? Well, once she, like, watches her friends go their separate ways, she heads back into either the arena or the practice area, just shoot some arrows to get some steam out and then to practice the javelins for the next day. Okay. You do get quite a few people kind of little heckling you, but there's others that are more uh, supportive. Be like, that that sucked that that was such a thing. I was rooting for you. Little things like that. You get to know a few people in the javelin things, some other contestants. There's some that are not good at all. You've seen them in the other two competitions and it seems like they were just there for the fun of it. They're like, we were able to get in and we're doing it. A lot of them are the local shopping shopkeepers, like kids or shopkeepers themselves Mm. that they just wanted to do it for fun. If Henley sees someone really good at javelin, she's going to go ask for some tips. Okay. You're able to see one who's doing really well. You see this kind of old halfling. She's been doing very well in the competitions for her age. And she seems to be doing very well at the javelins as well. So you may approach her if you would like. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Hello. You see her heft this javelin. Yeah. Really good throw. About About 100 feet. Um, yes. Hello. I Hello. have never um, thrown a javelin before. I know I'm a fellow competitor, but um, could I get some tips? Yeah, sure. Here. So, with the javelins, you want to make sure that you're... How, good, how strong are your arms? Well, I can shoot a bow. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could think of it as a bow, right? Because you have the bow and you pull the string back, right? 
Think as your arm is the string. You want to keep your body as straight as you can as you run forward. And she starts giving you all these tips. Roll me a straight intelligence check. That is a one, DM oh, Dave. Goodness. <laughs> Are you serious? I am deadly serious. So it continues. <laughs> Poor Henley. I don't understand why I can't get it, and I just kind of kick a javelin on the ground. Okay. She's like, well, the javelins are a little a little tricky, but maybe maybe we should call it for tonight. Thank you for your help. Yeah, just keep in mind what I told you, and maybe it'll help you tomorrow. Good luck. Thank you. I'm going to need it. Where are you off to? I think she will just go back to Lisbeth's and just write in her journal. Okay. It is getting late. And she grabs something like to go at a place. Stops at the local McDonald's and gets a double yeah. cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> or Extra I guess fries. she just, <laughs> she goes to not the one that Roscoe the, that they went to the other night, but a right, different there's one. There's plenty of food vendors about. You're able to snag something quickly and go back and write in your journal. Yeah. That is perfectly fine. Okay. Is everybody else going to the Lisbeth's house as well for the night? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Boudreaux? <clears throat> Sorry, yeah. We will call it that night. And in the morning, everybody gets up. And Lila and Grotha went back too as well, right? Yeah. Perfect. Kind of go through the morning routine, getting stuff. Lisbeth approaches you, Lila, and she's like, oh, I did get a letter for you. <gasps> I didn't realize you came back so late last night, but I do uh, have a letter for you. Oh, Sugar, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's fine. I, I went to bed, but, but here it is. <gasps> Thank you. That's so kind of you. Is Boudreaux awake at this point? Uh, yeah. 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 She's going to There was poignantly, food. I think. I'm pretty sure he was awake. Yeah. She's going to poignantly turn her back on Boudreaux whilst reading the letter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, you don't know that he can't even read it. Yeah. <laughs> it's more like she doesn't want to look at you because <laughs> oh. she's embarrassed. <laughs> the letter says, meet me in the sleeping boar. Tell the bartender you are there for Hanar and he will take you to me. Fadir. Okay, Boudreaux, what are you doing? Elizabeth, I have a question for you. Uh, yes. Can I have all your silver butter knives? No. Why would you want my silver butter knives? Because I need them. Well, we need them too, and they are ours. You see her, like, kind of start walking towards you. <laughs> uh, well, I just, I need something to, like, I just, I want to, Kill some things. <laughs> she you like know, when you get those manly urges. <laughs> you gotta kill some she things. She starts taking the extra silverware <laughs> off the table and like grab, Aww. like reaching to grab your silverware from your hand. Does Fenrir hear this? <laughs> yeah, everybody's there. So as Fenrir hears this, he looks over at Boudreaux and he will go, "Hey Boudreaux, uh, Roscoe and I went to the blacksmith place and they're gonna make us a couple silver daggers." Oh, really? I, th I think that'll work a lot better than butter knives. Oh, and he starts, he stops fighting her from taking the butter knife and let's go. <laughs> yeah, she's oh. not very strong. <laughs> <laughs> she falls over. She falls over. And he goes, oh, I'm so sorry. And he uh, helps her out. Okay. Stares long and I'm just going to be knife. shaking my head, eating my eggs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but well... I guess the tournament's going to be starting soon, so I guess you guys better hurry. Oh, you got a good point. Pats her on the back. Well, uh, we better get all headed off. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, you make a pretty good scrambled egg, but if I were you, maybe you'd like add some garlic in there just for funsies. Thanks for the tip. Okay, goodbye. Oh, ma'am, I'm, I'm so sorry about him. He... He doesn't know social cues at all or when it's okay or not okay to do things. Yeah, I, my dad's always telling me to be nice to people, but sometimes it's just... Uh, I completely I need to go understand. wash his seat. 
I'll do for you if you don't want to. I understand that. No, I'd, I'd that. appreciate it. I, woman to woman, I got you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Not the first time he's offended her. <laughs> <laughs> I think something happened before going to Donkey. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is everybody else heading to the tournament? Yeah, buddy. I'll yeah. be like probably 10 minutes behind after cleaning up after Boudreaux. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, you guys head off to the tournament. The same thing as yesterday. They put you in the center of the ring. There's there's directors and stuff telling you what's going on. First off, they're going to do the javelin toss. The javelin toss has kind of different... Uh, it's kind of in a baseball field type area. And there's different lines marking different distances as they go. You see a few contenders get up there. Some of them do fairly well. Some of them not so well. Fenrir. We're going to start with you first. Actually. Oh, Boudreaux. What What so, would you like to do before the tournament sit starts? Down. Hold on. No, you assuming that I'm going to sit by you. Oh. Explain yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Explain yourself. I'm so mad that you rejected me yesterday. Why would no, I sit by you? Not like that. I mean, like, what do you do? Oh, well, are you the DM now? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, okay, cool. We're going with that again. Um, so I want to see if I can find my new friends or if they're not at the, the tournament. Oh, yeah. The ones you met last night? Yeah. No, they're not there. Oh, then I'll go sit by Pedro. I mean, cool. Because <laughs> he saved you a spot, just so you know. I could, I could imagine you're, like, looking everywhere and you see Pedro. Hey, right here, right here. Yeah, you're I'm like, not continue please, to look. Please, somebody else. Please, <laughs> please. Raise your hand. <laughs> I don't know anybody else Buddha's here. Heavily waving down, like I'm over. Can I do it? Yeah, I got you saved your seat. Um. And then Budo's dad walks in right behind her. Oh! <laughs> and takes, up. Take, <laughs> takes the seat next to Budo. <laughs> Just kidding. He's no, no, no. And he throws up on him and runs. Uh, <laughs> uh, no. As he tries to disappear with his alligator hood on. <laughs> that is right. Because in the swamp, I would have disappeared in that thing. <laughs> okay. No. There's an open seat by Boudreaux okay. trying to get your attention. So okay. oh. while he goes, he's getting my attention, I will sit as in my seat next to him, but as far away from him as I possibly can. Okay. Well, so, yesterday I was like, oh, like, buddy, buddy, mm-hmm. and now I'm just... Okay. So then he immediately turns around to the person behind him and he goes... Hey, you want a better copper? A better copper for what? I bet that Boss Roscoe gonna win. Get first place in, in the javelin toss. That's right. Hmm. Yeah, you're wrong. All right. Anybody else want to join? Different person, though, yeah? <laughs> yeah, you get... Boudreau, knock it off. Lots of people start, start betting. They're betting on different people. I will roll my eyes and say... I don't condone this, and neither does Garatha, but somebody's got to be an impartial person here. I guess that I will do you a favor and hold the money so that way nobody actually takes this in runs. All right, guys, she's going to be the safe hold. She's going to hold the money, all right? All right, all right, all right. And they start the hand in the hand in Hold on one at a time. I don't want to lose your cash. <laughs> I, I ain't getting blamed for this. Person who wins gets the buy, yeah. So are we just going for the highest points or they have to get first? Whoever gets <laughs> whoever I here's what I say. Granted, I'm Boudreaux just holding the money. Uh, I'm just holding the money. Whoever gets the highest. This fine gentleman. Out of here. what we vote, whoever gets highest. That's right. Alright, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What she said. Yeah. <laughs> Don't drag me into this. I'm still mad at you. He punches you in your arm. This is the Don't. best day of my life. <laughs> Don't touch I'm me. I'm going to win some real money. For once, <laughs> Garatha and I are in agreement. Don't touch me. Start screaming as the uh, person totally goes up ignoring. on the stage. <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> <laughs> And Fudro stands up. And you start hearing Fudro. <laughs> so it's a javelin toss. This is just a normal ranged attack. But this one you can use strength or dexterity for. 15 on the first throw. 15 on the first throw. How many throws are we doing? Three. Okay, you get a good toss on this one. Getting you four points. It goes about 82 yards. Or feet, sorry. Seven. This one not so much, but you still... It goes about almost to 46 feet. But you get one point for that. 
eight. This one does get barely past the one you just did for two points. Henley. Okay, she comes up. She tries to remember all the things that Portia told her the day before. Okay. And 11. Your first throw goes 61 feet. You getting three points. 12. Same thing. You're able to match that one for another three points. And 16. And this one you're able to get a little farther, almost to 90 feet. But you get four points from that one. And the audience is, is liking it. They're like, that was some good throws. Roscoe. Right. You hear some people chatting, Roscoe, Roscoe. Bosman, Bosman, Bosman. <laughs> okay, so I'm a, I'm a midge, right? I'm yeah. half. This is eight. Okay. This oh. one gets to the 60, almost the 60 foot yard for two points. Oh, no. 13. <laughs> okay, you're able to get about 65 feet. That's three points. Come on, Roscoe, come on. You're, you're going to do this. You're going to do this. Oh, I told you, Ben was stupid. <laughs> 21. Ooh. Nice. Ooh. Okay, 21. You are able to throw this javelin almost over 120 feet for six points. It was probably about one. 12, 112 feet. Dope. Very good. Everybody loved that throw. The numbers are in. Roscoe, you got 11th place with 11 points. Henley, you got 12th place. And Henley, you get one point. Fenrir, you did not reach. And Boudreaux, you didn't you didn't win your money. I lost the pot. Dang. The, the guy pot. that was two to the left of the who, guy that who? you asked actually won. Actually oh. won. Yeah. What is he saying? His guy got third, third he... place. He's like, woo! I'm rich. Drinks are on me. Well, all right. <laughs> I guess if you do it like that. And then I'm not babysitting, sugar. So, you- so next round, <laughs> I got two copper on the bug lady, Hanley. The bug lady? You serious? Oh, that's right. I got four. She seems faith. so clumsy. Did you see her trying to throw those javelins? Oh, you'll see. I got full faith in this lady. Mm-hmm. Um, She's a good... Pucho, stop. What? None of this is necessary. You really think that this is okay? I lose two copper if I lose. You just won- lost thing. one now. I don't know how much you probably lost to Fenny when you were drunk. Yeah, I heard about that, by the way. Wait, I lost some money? Yeah. Oh. I mean, it was to Fenny. Oh, I'm going to talk to that man. <laughs> He's going to get it. He's going to give me my money back in. Yeah? Boudro, he's buying you a knife. You don't have to do anything. I hand the guy the copper. Well, if I you're you... so confident, why don't you make it five silver? No. Silver? <laughs> no. I need that. What, are you scared? <laughs> <laughs> Chicken? Chicken? <laughs> you know that's real good stuff. <laughs> I would rather be a chicken than look like you, you, you goose. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> and everybody's like, oh. So, I apologize. <laughs> I'm not necessarily <laughs> taking it. <laughs> no. Just, t- please, watch yourself. You better don't, explain yourself. Don't say another word, All right, but chicken tastes good on about everything. Have you ever tasted a jambalaya or anything like that? Or like you can make it out of this and you can make it out of that and you can make it out of there. No, 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 you, you horse's butt. Oh! Well, at least I'm pretty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it. He takes a swing at you. Oh, my sweet <laughs> um, can I? I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah I want to duck because I don't know how, how this, this is going to go. This guy whiffs it. He stumbles a little bit. He's drunk. What do you do? Can I grab him and just like, I want to just grab his shoulder because he's above me, right? And I turn and Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go face to face with him. Okay. Yeah, I'll allow it. Okay. And I go, I think I know more about cooking than you do. So you better (laughs) shut up. All right. You want to put the copper in or you don't? (laughs) Are you trying to intimidate him? Yeah. Roll intimidation. (laughs) I mean. If and do he, it at do it at if advantage. He would be intimidated. Do it at advantage. <laughs> that plus zero. That's fourteen. Okay, <laughs> oh, he's he kind of straightens himself out, and you can see he's embarrassed. Yeah. Right, he's like, fine. Here's my two copper. 
Then you see his friends like start ribbing him. He's like, oh, he got you, <laughs> goose. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me he has a nose like a goose. <laughs> <laughs> like a goose beak. <laughs> it makes sense. It's a big old nose. And, and um, Boudreaux's A big smile. old honker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boudreaux, um smiles at him and he goes, but honestly, I've never tasted it. And he turns forward. <laughs> <laughs> Lila's just gonna shake her head and it's the first time that she's actually been embarrassed to Boudreaux as Lila <laughs> you, you know what people say with people who have big noses right hmm man they got big noses <laughs> 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 okay we are now heading to the stealth portion you see that the setup is kind of like in a circular maze. People have to come through. There's towers that sit up high looking over. And inside, there's, pe- there's people trying to find. It's almost like a hide-and-seek type scenario. You're trying to hide from the people that are looking for you. So, Henley, we will go with you first. Quick side note. Yes. Is magic prohibited? The rules said that if you... As long as it's not a magical item, magic can be used. So in this part, there are three checkpoints that you need to get to. Go ahead and roll them. Henley is wearing a hood to cover her very red hair. Okay. And this will be, of course, the uh, stealth check. Fifteen. Okay, you are able to make it to the first checkpoint. Roll stealth again. That is a crit fail. No. Okay, so you are at your first, the first checkpoint, and you're like, okay, I can do this. I can do this. And you start walking around the corner, and you bump right into the side of the of the wall, going entering the next section, and you're just like, ow! And they're like, aha, found you. Roscoe, you are up. So... Just to clarify, if you get caught, then you don't proceed, right? If you get spotted. Great. 22. Okay, very well. You're able to sneak right past in there for the first checkpoint. It's because I'm short. You're doing very well. Uh, Henley, on the side note, I wish I could share my luck feet with you. (laughs) Okay, off to the next spot. Uh, That is a 10. Okay, this one was a close one. You are able to hear the person coming after you, and you're able to sneak right into the checkpoint. Okay, one more checkpoint of this level. Um, I'm going to use my luck. <laughs> okay. Luck used. 18. Okay, you're able, able to make it past level one. Jolly good. Do I get points? You do, but they'll all get them all together and then give it to you when you leave. Okay. Or when you get caught. Okay, level two. Actually, we'll do when Fenrir first. Or if. If. If is good. <laughs> <laughs> Fenrir. My first roll was a 17. Okay, you're able to make it to the first point checkpoint just fine. Second one was 16. Same. Really good. And 13. Okay. Really good. Fenrir and Roscoe move on to level two. Okay. They rearranged a bunch of things, and now... It's even harder. There's more people looking around for you. Roscoe, go ahead. There's four tower. There's four checkpoints in this one. 18. Okay, you make it to the first one. Getting, getting a little difficult, though. 19. Perfect. Moving right along. Halfway through these ta- the checkpoints. Luck roll. Because <laughs> you got three of those, right? Or... Oh, no, you got no, it as I, a halfling. As That's long right. as it, I can only use it once per roll. So. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, 22. Okay, that was even better. You're getting the hang of this. Seven. <laughs> okay. Got a little too confident there at the end, and they snagged you. Rip. They were able to catch you. Okay, Fenrir, you just seen Roscoe get out, and you see a few other people pass on to level three. Crit one. Wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you just... Barely step out. <laughs> and let's see. Step on a twig. There's a twig, a random twig. 
just popped in there. Yeah, you're kind of you're kind of mumbling to yourself. It's like, man, that really sucks for Henley. She couldn't even get past there, and somebody heard you. <laughs> he was and they're like, hey, you got to keep it down if you're gonna sneak around here. And by the way, you're out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> no, he was um doing it like a uh, Emperor's New Groove. <laughs> so unfortunately, you guys did not make it into the top 12 in that one for any points. Boudreaux and Lila, is there anything that you wanted to do? Yeah, Boudreaux, is there anything that you're doing? Who got the money? Oh, I gladly handed it off to whoever won. Yep. The person who won it, the guy right behind you won it. The, the duck? The goose? The yeah. goose guy? I look at him and I smile and I'm like, yeah, you done good, good, man. He's like, yeah, yeah. He just walks off with his money. I smile at his friends, though, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the tournament's over. Everybody, they're calculating all the points, seeing who gets, who's placing where. So the night is free for you guys. Do you guys want to do anything particular, or should we move on to the next day? Ooh, I'm going to go meet my dad. Okay. Ooh. Do we know if we Yeah, I want to know if I place. participate the next day? They, they're going to have everybody come back. And then make the announcements then. Okay. Boring. Disappoint everybody. Can I go find Robert and see if he can give me a little inside? Yeah, you, you can do that. <laughs> okay. Someone wander around, look for Robert. Like, hey, Robert. Oh, hello. Hello. To, how can I help you? You got any, any inside information for me? How'd I do? Oh, well, that last one was really, really tricky. There was a lot of good sneaky people, but... I, I will go check just for you. You want all three of you? You want me to go check them out? I'll go check them out. You just give me one second, okay? Thank okay. you. I'll be right back. About 10 minutes later, he comes back and he's like, well, it doesn't look like any of you topped in the in the top 10. I'm, I'm sorry. Gasp. All right. Thank you. Yes, yes. And, and better luck next time, next time, you know, but... Yeah, I was really rooting for you. You had a strong <laughs> showing yesterday, but this, I don't know. Yes, today is kind of rough. Today was a little hard. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Yep. Yep. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, you guys are kind of all gathered together again. According to Robert, none of us scored in the top ten, but we're not supposed to know that. So, I mean, we'll come back tomorrow. Maybe someone dies overnight, and one of us can wiggle in. I mean. <laughs> Could always ask Kunda. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to him. I'm not saying I'm gonna kill anyone. Who <laughs> draw? <Boudreaux>. What? <laughs> now why? Why would you do that? I'm not gonna ask him to kill him. I'm just gonna ask him but if I'm, he wants to. Um, <laughs> Look, maybe someone's. I have to explain this every time. Uh, Sometimes. No, no, no. Live. No, no. You don't is... have to. I gotta go. I got somewhere to be. Well, wh where are you going? It doesn't concern you, sugar. Well, I come with you. Yeah. No, th this is something I gotta do on my own. This is something the girl has gotta do on her own, and, and I don't think that she much wants you there either right now. It's nothing personal, sugar. That's gonna be enough. Well, you were kind of mean to me yesterday, so I don't feel bad. What did I use yesterday? I'm going to walk off, and I'm not going to answer him. I'm pretty good at that. What does everybody else want to do? <laughs> he looks at everybody I'm else. I'm probably just going to head, head back down to the pub and grab some food for the night and sulk a little bit and go to bed. Okay. I want to go find a jewelry store to sell this jeweled bracelet. You're able to find a jewelry store, and they'll they'll give you five silver for it. Can I haggle for seven? You sure can. Do you want me to roll? I want to know what you say. He'll just take the five silver and be like, okay, I'll take the five silver. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, not today. With that, I think we'll go over to Lila and Garatha. Oh. Okay, you go to the sleeping boar. Okay. So on the way over, I've been kind of having a discussion um, with Garatha as to how to convince him that you know it's Garatha and whatnot and we haven't come to a conclusion so I come in and I go from slip from Lila talking as Lila to Garatha mid-sentence and I'm saying hey there sugar um I am actually here to see Hanar is he here 
Well, yes, of course. You can come with me. Thank you. So he takes you in the back, and he opens up this this room in the back, and he points you in. I step in very tentatively and nervous. Okay. You see, as you walk in, it is a well-lit room. And as the door opens and you walk in, you do see a dwarf standing before you. He's about four foot three with a small scar splitting his left eyebrow. Brown hair neatly cut. Beard is dark as well with a single red streak running through through it about two inches wide. And of course, you would know that your father is very proud of his beard. And it is adored with beads and everything, with the clan with the clan crests on the beads. Is he facing me or is he away from me? There, he's looking at you. He was kind of pacing. It looked like he was pacing. And then once the door opened, he kind of just stood there and stared at you. Hi, Dad. Gratha. Yes, sir. He just walks up to you and gives you a hug. It's not what I was expecting. So I'm like really <laughs> shocked. Like I, you have that moment where they're like, oh, oh my gosh, this is happening. So uh, it takes me a minute to hug him back. Right. You have a little, little moment and he just bring, pulls you back with, with his hands on your shoulders. He's like, I, your friend Brighton, he said that you that obviously changed. What, what happened, my dear? I don't really know. I almost died and I was with one of my friends who you mostly see that's her name's Lila and she almost died and then we woke up and I look like this and there's not just me here there's two of us you can talk to her if she if you want to too she's we're both in here and she points to her head and taps on the side of her head a little bit. It's like, so, yeah. I've heard of strange magics, but I've never imagined magic like this. Yeah. So there's two of you in there now. Yeah, there's two of us. And I wasn't expecting such a warm reception from you, especially considering that I don't look very dwarven, which is something that I know you weren't super happy about to begin with and mm. I don't look much like I used to which I don't know how you feel or don't feel I know the last letter that I heard from you is that you had changed that something had happened and then I hadn't heard from you for almost a year I thought you were you were you were dead surprise I'm, and a very pleasant surprise I am I am so Glad to see you. I don't care what form you are. I just, I missed you. This is not what I expected because you were so hard on me and I don't know quite how to take this. <laughs> well, it's been, you know, over a year and it's had, gave me time to think. Maybe I was a little too hard on you. I didn't want the last things to be so harsh. The last words that would be so harsh. Well, you had a better reception than... Lila's family did when I said that I was going to go off and that I wasn't really cut out for what you thought I was cut out for. So it's kind of put things into perspective for me too. Come, let's, let's, let's sit. Let's, yes. let's talk. Yes, please. There's much to talk about. Okay. And we can kind of let that go into the evening. Yep. Um, you, I'm guessing you're going to talk all night as long as you guys. Uh-huh. As long as you guys can. Perfect. There's going to be some drinking involved, too. Yeah. And I'm sure. <laughs> he's good friends with the bartender. The dwarves, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this is the first time I've had dwarven ale. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my first time. You're just a wimp. Okay. So we'll end it there. <laughs> Thanks, you guys, for listening. Uh, big shout out for D.A. Nichols, as always, for writing our music. Um, check out our RPG at drivethroughrpg.com. Shields of Power. Also, guys, follow us on Twitter, on Instagram, Tomes of the Chaos Bard, also Gmail. Email us. Let us know how we're doing. See how, what you, let us know what you like. We want to interact with you guys and see what's going on. Also, oh, that's at thechaosbardpod at gmail.com. Also, guys, write us a five-star review. 
And make sure you write it. Don't just give us a five star because then we don't know who to give a shout out to. Solomon doesn't know if you don't leave a your name and number type idea. <laughs> okay. With that, I am DM Dave. And to the le- right, we have... Fenrir. Roscoe. Garoth and Lila. Woodrow. And Henley. And until next time, we unroll the scroll to tell the tale. Bye.